Welcome to Tuesday Crafternoons. My name is Charity and I work in children's services at the downtown branch of the St. Albert Public Library and I am excited to be with you here today to share our craft which is going to be a collage which is perfect for sharing with the seniors residences that we have in St. Albert. So we had a request a little while back to ask our patrons to please uh, email in some artwork that could then be shared with the retirement residences and could be um, printed by them to put on the walls to help spread some cheer. Thought this was a really lovely idea, and as soon as I heard it, it made me think of my Guido, who is in a care facility. But my Guido has low vision. I wanted to think of a craft that we could do that would be designed so that it could be enjoyed by everybody, those who can see really clearly and also those who may have uh, some vision difficulties. So this one here is using flyers. <laughs> There are some other options, but flyers literally caught my eye as an option to do this craft because flyers are designed with high visibility in mind. You can see the colors are super, super bright, uh, reflecting a lot of light, and they uh, also have a lot of that high contrast, so that light right beside dark already uh, built into them. So to do this craft, I'm just gonna dive right in and show you and then you can use what you have around to do it after. It's really simple and actually quite quick. So to do this craft, I took my flyer and I'm just gonna rip it up into a bunch of little pieces. You don't want them to be too tiny, but you don't want them to be too big either because if they're too big, you're gonna have trouble actually filling in your shape. I found that about the size of my thumb was good, but you don't need it to be perfect. You're just, I'm just squeezing and ripping. You can see you got a different one there. They all work until you have got a pile of flyer. You don't even need to rip the whole thing up. It doesn't take that many pieces. So once I have my little pile there, then the next thing that I need to do is I need to do the outline of my shape so that I kind of have a guide of what I am going to be working inside of. So for this here, um, you could just draw your heart if you want to do a heart or for a happy face it's a circle circles are really challenging to draw so i decided that what i was gonna do is i am going to trace one using an old container that i have kicking around so i can take that and just trace around the edges to get my circle and once I have my shape that I want to work with, then I am going to use some sort of glue. I'm using a glue stick and you can use white glue, but the thing about white glue and collage is that if you're putting the glue down too thick, then it can get on your fingers and make it hard to actually get the paper to stick onto your surface. So um, I recommend if you are using white glue, if that's what you have, maybe use a Q-tip or something else to spread it on thin onto the shape before you get started. I like to work from the outside in when I'm doing something like this. That's just the way I usually do it. So for me, I am taking and putting some glue around the edge and you may notice that for the glue stick, I'm not filling in the whole shape because chances are that once I get over here, it's going to be dry and I'm going to have to glue again. So I'm just putting some glue to start on the edge and then I am taking my pieces of paper and just going around and sticking them all down along those edges. Now you can see this one makes it a little bit harder. So I'm actually going to turn it so that I have the shorter side here. And it's still a little bit ragged on that edge. That's okay, because we can actually clean that up later when we're going around the outside. 
or you could you could rip it a little further. But once I do that and I keep going, then you can see eventually I'm going to have a full circle filled in. Now, once I have this done, what I did was I took a Sharpie. I have a king size Sharpie kicking around my house. You don't have to use a Sharpie. Uh, dark felt will also work. You may just have to go around a few times to get that good line. Uh, but I did have this nice big Sharpie. And when you are using a Sharpie, it is so important that you put some paper underneath or a flyer or some sort of barrier between uh, what the what you're working on and the table underneath. Super important. You don't want to learn that the hard way like I have um, more than once, sadly. And I imagine some of you have experienced that as well. So once you have something underneath there, you're going to take your Sharpie and you can go around the edge and draw in the face so that you have your happy face to spread some cheer. I must admit that I had so much fun doing this craft that I finished one and was like, I, I want to make another. And I also was really curious what other parts of the paper would look like. And so this is the other side of the flyer where it's white and it still works really well because we have that high contrast between the really light and the really dark, which helps to make it visible. So that's what it looks like here. Great thing about collages is everyone's going to be unique as you rip it up. I really love them. And as I mentioned, you don't just have to use flyers. When I was looking for supplies going around, thinking about what people might have in their houses as well, came across wrapping paper which is often very bright and colorful and fun. And that is what I used to do this heart. So it would turn out very different depending on what you might have. Uh, there is one done with a flyer, one done with the wrapping paper. And if I wanted to increase the visibility on this as well, I could also go around and do that outline. And then you could also write a message on there. I've heard of um, people who also wrote down jokes to send in, which is really sweet. So perfect for sharing. Uh, think about what you have around. You could maybe have like an old damaged book that you could use for collage. I also had a uh, tissue paper and an old origami a day calendar that the paper would lend itself really well to it. So get creative and once you have your craft done, oh before I forget, for our very youngest crafters, if sticking down um, paper is not going to work for you, another idea is to take that, that kind of clean shape and use, if you have some bright finger paints using your darkest colors or your brightest colors, this is just trying to stay inside um, that shape so that it becomes highly visible. But if you go outside of the lines, if you have some mistakes, it's okay. That's sweet too. But there is an idea for our youngest crafters. And once you have that artwork created, then you can share it with us. You can email it to sapple at sapple.ca. So that is S A P L at S A P L dot C A. You can take a picture scan it if you have the availability, send it in. You can share it with us in the comment uh, section under this post on Facebook. I uh, really love to see what you guys come up with. And if you still feel like having some art fun, you might want to check out some cool art stories that we have available on our e-resources. I really like Arts Supplies and The Dot which are both on tumble books. And for our adult crafters, wanted to make sure that you are aware that if you go under our e-resources and go to Canopy, there is something called the Great Courses. And there are two great courses offered that are very comprehensive on the subject of drawing and painting that you may enjoy. I hope you have a lot of fun with the crafts. 
and uh, have the time to uh, share them with the seniors in our retirement residences. And I also hope that we get to see you here again for another Tuesday Crafternoon. Bye!